Then it sings my song. Now I say, Dear God, to you. How great thou art. How great. That is what he said, because it's Christmas. And brother, I say all the time we have to be jolly because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yeah. The Bible says to rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. There is a reason for us to be rejoicing each day because Jesus Christ is our righteousness. He is our life and he is our peace. Yeah. Greetings to you all. And welcome to our live stream all the way from the U.S. by YouTube and Facebook. This is Liberty House International Church. And um, it's a privilege, it's a blessing to be ministering to you. Thanks for tuning in. In case you missed any portion of this live stream, please go to our webpage, libertyhouseusa.org. Once again, libertyhouseusa.org. Or go to our um, YouTube channel and type in Liberty House International Church. Then you can treat yourself to the videos that we have online. Online. I know people go there and at times uh, they type in my name, Apostle Samuel Quaid, but there are other Samuel Quaid. I don't have my middle name in there. So when you go there, you'll find me. I don't like putting my name on stuff. I'm serving the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, an agent of change and transformation. So look for Liberty House International Church. But I have one song out there, so that has my name on it. So at times people go there and then they say, well, we, we find uh, only uh, a couple of videos. No, go to Liberty House International Church. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. And those that are listening to us, please subscribe. Please subscribe. Uh, YouTube likes that. And it helps us too. So please do that. Subscribe. We are, we are not monetizing anything, but it helps us when you subscribe. Hallelujah. All right. So that's just about that. And uh, concerning my song to do that. Hallelujah. When you hear it, you can tell that it's a song of the now. Glory to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of our comfort. Well, He's done it again. 
Amen. His watch over our souls, his preserve our lives. And look at us. We have enjoyed the ride, full ride from the beginning of the year, and he's taking us to. We bless God for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, okay, so let me be brief here tonight. It's very cold uh, that uh, Jesus is not Jesus. He's on the throne. Now, when we talk about human beings, you and I, there are certain characteristics or traits that uh, are very unique to a human being. In the same way, when you talk about uh, animals or an, an animal, there are certain characteristics or traits that are unique to animals in general and uh, unique also to um, a category of uh, animals. Hallelujah. Some fly, some don't fly. You know what I'm talking about. Some walk on four legs, some don't, and all that. So, well, let's leave it that way. You know what I'm talking about. Now, but on the other hand, when you look at plants, you can tell that uh, 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 a plant is not an animal. A plant is not a human being because it likes the characteristics, the traits that make, uh, that are unique to a uh, what? A human being. Hallelujah. And uh, I will tackle something that is basic, very fundamental, but yet it's a stumbling block to a lot of people in the face. Because there's confusion about that. More so, what some ministers of the gospel are teaching. Whether they do that on purpose or it is due to lack of knowledge, but there's mis misinformation is going on. And so I'm here to tell you, Christ, our righteousness. That's going to be my topic. Christ, our righteousness. Jesus Christ is our righteousness. Jesus Christ is our righteousness. Christ, our righteousness. So we'll go to Romans chapter 1. And then we'll read uh, from verse 16. I'll read uh, um, 17 as well. When I'm reading these things, I like to read all, but at times to um, save uh, time, then I have to stop. I'm getting excited, but I, I'll stay. <laughs> I'll stay cool and calm. <laughs> for I am not ashamed. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, the gospel, the message of Christ, the message of Christ. Hallelujah. We can say, I'm not ashamed of the good news, the message, yeah. all right? Yeah. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Now, when you have a good study Bible, you realize that they are saying that the word Christ or the name Christ is in some text is omitted or it's not there. But now, when you look at this, the whole verse, I'll read that again. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Let's leave it that way. And then forget about Christ for now. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone, country, everyone who believes. The word believes is also important. For the Jew first, Jew first. And also for the Greek. All right. Now we are talking about something that is common, like I'm talking about the traits or the characteristics of a human being. Something here that is very common, that is made available, that is a condition, that is a requirement for both Jews and Greeks. Greek that refers to Gentiles, heathen, those who are non Jews. And outside the covenant of promise. For Jews to have any relationship with God in the Old Testament, it was through the law. And uh, Greeks, Gentiles, heathen, or the nations were not, uh, what do you call it, included. There was no invitation, as it were. That is why God decided to have it his way 
including other nations of the Greek. So now here it says, for the, um, I'll read it again. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, so we can put Jesus Christ there now. The gospel of Christ, for it is the, uh, is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. The same thing. Because uh, under the law, like I said, it was only for the Jews. It's only with the coming of Jesus Christ, his sacrifice, his death, his resurrection, ascension, and sitting, sitting at the right hand of God, is what offers both the Jew and the Greek. Because in the book of uh, Ephesians, Colossians, it says that he's made both what? One. Hallelujah. He's made both what? One. I, I, I always trip over this. Uh, what is it? Colossians 2 14. Please take, please take that for me to be sure. He's made both one. I confuse it with Ephesians, uh, what do you call it? 2 14. Yeah, I think it's Colossians 2 14. He's made both one. All right? So, Ephesians 2 14. He's made both one, right? And uh, what? Run down the uh, middle wall of separation? Okay, thank you. So it's Ephesians 2 14. All right, so there's nothing like Jews have a special covenant with God and Gentiles don't have it. Or Jews have a special covenant with God and the covenant that Gentiles or other nations have with God is different. Now, the Jew believes in Christ and the Gentile or the heathen that believes in Christ, they are both the same. Why? Because they both believe in Jesus Christ. It's called the church, the body of Christ. Hallelujah. It's the body of Christ. So here we can say it's the gospel of Christ. It says it's the power of God unto salvation. When we talk about salvation, we're talking about redemption from what? A sin, redemption from judgment, ransom that is paid for the penalty of our sin, which is what? Death. Then it comes only through Jesus Christ. Because under the law or in the Old Testament or covenant, then of course the soul that sin shall die. All right? Or the wages of sin is death. So each time somebody sin against God, that is why they have to offer the animal sacrifice. The animal takes the place of the person who is supposed to die because of their sin, the penalty of sin, which is death. And so the person lays uh, their hand on the offering, the animal, and then as it were, identify with the animal, transferring the sin upon the animal, and the animal is the one that dies. So the person who sin can live. And as a result, Jesus came, so there will no more be animal sacrifice or sacrifice for sin when somebody sins, but he became the Lamb of God. He offered himself once and for all. Uh, we'll finish this, but let's have Hebrews 9.28. I just want to nail this because at times people don't know some of these things, so it's good to have them. I have this verse for them. So it says what? So Christ was offered once, once to bear the sins of many to those who are what? Eagerly, who eagerly wait for him, he will what? Appear a second time apart, apart from what? Sin for salvation. Hallelujah. So it was offered once. And I'm not going to break this verse down because if I do, I'm going to go off and I don't want to do that. But it's about what Jesus has done. God, I'm, not, I'm being tempted to go back. Okay, so he offered his uh, what? The Bible says once to bear the sins of men. That is why Jesus doesn't die again and again and again. Every Christmas, he is not born again and again. Every, every year, and then uh, he goes on the cross. We commemorate his death, but that doesn't mean he's dying again. He's, he, he died only once. He laid down his life. He shed his blood only once. And that takes care of everything. Anybody who is going to be born into the world, even today, that one sacrifice takes care of the sin of that person. Okay, so now let's go back to the Romans 1, 16 that we're reading. Hallelujah. So, the message we are talking about, the gospel we are talking about, the good news of Jesus Christ, is that 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. John 3 says 10. And Romans 10, we are not going to 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and, be, um, and believe that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So, so, and then we are looking at salvation here in Romans 1, 16, coming from the word so, so, to save. And here the Greek word is soteria. Talking about salvation, it's talking about preservation, it's talking about deliverance, it's talking about healing, prosperity, all included. Hallelujah. Yeah. So it's through what? Jesus Christ. Now let's go to the next verse. You see the way it is that when people just stand and they, they talk, 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 without going to scripture, they rob people of uh, precious nuggets of truth that they should hear and understand. That is why there's a lack of understanding the body of Christ. And a lot of people are caught up in rituals, routines. And Jesus said, with that, you have uh, made the word of God of no word effect. It says, for in it, talking about the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ. For in it, the righteousness of God is what? Revealed. From faith to faith, as it is written, the judge shall live by faith. So a big word is thrown into the picture now. It's talking about righteousness. And we are saying Christ our righteousness. It says in this gospel of Jesus Christ, what Jesus has done, we can talk about the cross. He laying down his life. Okay? The message about that is that is uh, where the righteousness of God is what? Revealed from faith to faith. So I give you a typical picture. Do your homework. Study uh, what well, the book of uh, Acts chapter 10 from verse 1. Cornelius, the Bible says he was a devout person. He was praying, he was giving alms, he was even fasting at times and all that. He was a good person. Yet, he didn't have the righteousness of God. He wasn't righteous. He wasn't righteous. He wasn't born again. His sins were not forgiven. An angel showed up and directed him to go for Peter. And Peter came there. And it was when Peter started to preach. And from verse 34, you realize that Peter was saying that I perceive that God is not partial. So we talk about Jesus Christ, how they crucified him. This person is raised, Jesus Christ. And how he's the only person given so that through him, people might come to salvation. All right? When we talk about salvation, it means to start with that there is separation between you and God, your creator or your maker. And for that gap to be breached, it takes one's faith, one's trust, one's confidence, belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work. You have to believe that. Other than that, it's no breach. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, talking about that, that's why times people quote uh, scriptures like um, Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, that the Lord's hand is not short, neither is his hear heavy that he can hear us, but our sins, you know, our iniquities have separated us from him. And there are believers who still think like this. If you think like this and you walk in sin consciousness, then you are not grounded. You are not rooted in the finished work of Christ. And this is the reason why I'm talking about this. Because somebody says, I'm a virgin, so I'm holy. When we're growing up, that's what he said. It, uh, uh, holiness is based on you being a virgin. Holiness is based on a lot of things. How you dress and whatever. Then they say you are holy. If, if um, I won't say this. I was going to say something. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you relax your hair as a guy, if you relax your hair or whatever, I'm not talking about perming, yes, you know, not even jerry curls. Jerry curls, then you are off. It means you are not holy. <laughs> even if you are a believer, you are not holy. I mean, it was not extreme. It was like that growing up. So I'm talking about the 70s and the 80s <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, so as a result of that, people attribute holiness to, okay, I pray all the time. I go to church service all the time. I mean, I'm uh, serving in the uh, in my local assembly. You know, I don't steal. I don't cast people out. I don't, I, I don't hate people. I don't do this. So I'm holy. No, all these things, even though they are good, it's good uh, not to steal from anybody. It's good not to be malicious. It's good not to hate, all right? But all these things, they do not make you holy. 
they do not make you righteous. There is only one thing that make, uh, makes you holy or righteous. It's your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. That is why people today, they fast. Because they think when they fast, then they become holy. When they fast, they are righteous before God. They are accepted before God. That is not the case. Hallelujah. And under the uh, New Testament or, um, or the New System, New Covenant, when you become a child of God, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, he's ready, he, his ears are open to your prayer. There's nothing like sin. You, he lives in you, you have fellowship with him. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's look at the word righteousness. Another word for righteousness is what? Justification. All right, so here it says justification. Um, so we are talking about equity of character or act, equity of character or act, specifically Christian justification. So justification is not such a big word. Um, declared what just righteousness or righteous declared what righteous meaning that you are innocent. That's all. The God frees you from uh, the penalty of sin, the judgment of sin, you know, condemnation of sin. He frees you from that because you have placed your faith, you have placed your, your trust, your confidence in Jesus Christ. Yeah. The cross, he died on the cross for you because when he died on the cross, he bore you and I, our sins. Amen. Look, this is that simple and I want us to get it. But the issue is, some people say, well, I understand that. I believe in Jesus Christ, my sins are forgiven. But then they go back to works. Okay? Your work didn't qualify you to be righteous or just before God. So there's no work that you're going to do further when he has declared you what? Righteous or just. Right? So that's what it, when we talk about that, another big way that I'm going to say is, it is the state or condition that is acceptable to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So you become acceptable yeah. to God. Amen. Amen. You, don't, you don't have to do anything to become acceptable to God. You are already acceptable to God. Amen. You are approved of God as it were. And I want us to pay attention to this. And let's get it well. <laughs> Righteousness of God. Righteousness of God, it comes through Jesus Christ, not through the law, and not through any other means. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's go to the same book of Romans. We'll read chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, um, verse 21. We'll start from 21. If you can read the whole book of Romans, it's good. But if you are that occupied because you are doing Christmas shopping, just read the, the chapter, chapter 3. It will help you. Hallelujah. I read, still from New King James Version. But now, I like the word what? Now. For, 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 for this verse, starting with that, <laughs> it means that something was said before this particular verse. So I'm going to take you back, all right, and read from 19, the 19th verse, so you appreciate what you're about to hear. So 19, Romans 3. Now we know, now we know, that means then we didn't know, previously we didn't know, but now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law. So, I want to chip in this. If you go and read the Old Testament and you talk, reading about the law and all that, the first thing I want you to understand that what you're reading relates to those who are under the law or related to those who were under the law at the time that it was written. I continue the verse. That every month may be what? Stopped. And all the world may become guilty before God. So you read something like this, you realize that, wow. You say, okay, God, 
If everybody is going to become guilty because of this law, then why did he give us the law? They were trying to prove that they were macho and they were giving the law and they realized that they couldn't even, you know, live according to it. Hallelujah. So God in his kindness, in his goodness, you know, he came up with a better system based on better promises. Hallelujah. Okay, let's read on 20. And I want you to know that if you're a Christian, if you're a child of God, if you're born again, you are no longer under the law. You are dead to the law. Okay. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Listen to this carefully. By the deeds of the law, no flesh, no human being, flesh means no human being will be justified. In his sight. When we talk about in his sight, we are talking about God. Nobody can be uh, will be justified. When we talk about deeds, we are talking about like business, employment, I'm talking about the uh, labor, work, doing, and act. All right? That which anyone is occupied with. So that's all, that's what it is. So far as you're putting your effort and whatever, you are doing something. That is why this is. When I when I, I teach, I say that don't go into your own works. You have to know what Jesus has done and stay in there and keep following him. Take instructions from him. Don't take instructions from any other place. You are going to confuse yourself. Hallelujah. So it says by the what? Deeds of the law, works of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. Now when we talk about works, the law gave them things to do by virtue of the law. Don't do this, don't do that, do this, do that. And he's saying that by those days, those works, those acts, there's no way any person doing all those things can be what? Justified. When we talk about justified, we talk about it already. Justification, righteousness, know that these two words, you can always use them um, simultaneously. Am I saying those uh, interchangeably? Interchangeably. Yeah. Okay. So justify, be righteous, just, innocent. So when you read the Bible, then you have things like uh, oh, the righteous, the just. You know, then you disqualify yourself right away. Then you say, Well, I'm not I'm not righteous and I'm not just because you've not been taught well, you are missing four. Because you look at yourself and you say, oh, well, you know, two weeks ago evening, I told a lie to my mom. Oh, and then the, the, the week before that, I was with my friends and, you know, I told another lie. I've not been straightforward with people and whatever, blah, blah, blah. You see, you are going to works your own effort. It's not your own effort. Staying a straight course, not telling a lie, giving your money to everybody. I mean, doing an uh, act of what? Uh, what? service and kindness to people that is not like Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. That's not what that is not uh, the thing that makes you what? Um, justified. Righteous or just. It's faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so uh, no one by the law is impossible. Alright? Now, let's read on. <laughs> we are now in what? Uh, no, did I finish the verse? No one may be justified in uh, what, his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. I think I read that. 21. That is where we're going to read and we went back for context. So it says, but now, meaning all that we have read, this law, law, law thing, you know, even though if they, they obeyed it, it would have uh, given them righteousness. It didn't. All right. Now, before I read this, let's go to Romans 10, 1. Then we'll come back. I don't paint a very good picture. Romans 10 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. When we look at Israel, we have to look at Israel well in the proper kind of context. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. Verse 2, Paul speaking, his desire. Paul was then Saul, 
a staunch what? Pharisee who persecuted the church of God and in Acts chapter 9 had a revelation of Jesus Christ and right away started to preach Jesus as the Messiah. For I bear them witness. No, no, the verse 2. For I bear them what? Witness that they have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge. Just like him. He's referring to himself, Saul, when he had a what? So much zeal and he thought he was persecuting the Christians. He thought he was doing something wrong. He said, no, no, no. I didn't have the right knowledge. I was ignorant. In the same way, people who are still teaching the law, they are not knowledgeable of present truth. That's it. Hallelujah. Let's read on. For them being ignorant, there you go, he said, for them being ignorant of God's righteousness. In the church today, from the what? A stage, the pulpit, right down to the greeter at the door, there are folks who are still ignorant of God's righteousness. That's why there are some churches, they are labeled as what? A holiness church or whatever, because they see holiness as something that is outward, external. Holiness comes from within. And this is the way I'm going to describe it to you so you get it. I am a male. That's why I, start, I started saying that there are characteristics of a human being. I'm a male. I don't go to the store uh, each day, each morning, to buy something from the store to make me a male. I don't. He packaged me as a male. And I'm still a male till the day what? I will die. Now, somebody can say, well, I've been a male for some time now, and I want to change. I want to check out what it is like to be a female. Now, you can think that way. You can choose that way. You can decide that way. But that doesn't make you a female. Because the characteristics that are distinct from a, a male, from a female, would disqualify you. Hallelujah. All right. So you live from within. You see, I'm, I'm already made. Babo used to say already made. Meaning, uh, you go walk to the store like you're looking for a dress, you're just going to pick it up. You're looking for a shirt, you're just walking to the store. We, we used to call it ready made. When we say custom, then that means we, we will go to our own tailor and then he will make it for us. That's what it is, or a seamstress. We make a dress for you. Okay. So, all right, we are already made. And seeking what? To establish their own righteousness. Do you see that? Okay. They be ignorant of God's righteousness. Come on. And seeking to establish their own righteousness. Come on have not submitted to the righteousness of God. That is what is going on in the church today. And I'm going to be bold, audacious, in humility, and confidently say it. Righteousness has nothing to do with fasting. What we have read so far, righteousness, being righteous, being just, has nothing to do with fasting. Because fasting has not been mentioned here. It has nothing to do with how long or how often you pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. So some, some ministers, when, you, when, when they think you are not praying, then they say, you know, you are, you are not holy. Because you don't pray, you are not holy, you are not righteous. No. Hallelujah. Let's, let's go back to <laughs> I'm just letting you know what it is. What things are choking people while they're struggling? So some are ignorant of God's righteousness. You have to ask yourself, what is God's righteousness in the first place? Before you go about saying, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. No, find out what that is. So let's go back to the Romans chapter 3 that we're reading. And then we'll read from verse 21. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed. Do you see? Romans 3, 21. The righteousness, now, now, not yesterday, not what you call it, some uh, time in the, under the Old Testament. He's talking about 
Jesus, because Jesus laid out his life, now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed. Remember, we read in chapter 1 that the verse 16, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto what? Salvation. Verse 17, in that gospel, in that message, in that good news, is the what? Righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, for the just shall live by faith. So he says, Righteousness. Now, the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So, all that the Old Testament, the law, all that the Old Testament, the prophets were talking about, was pointing to the righteousness of God that will be revealed. That is going to show up apart from what? The law. When we say the law, that includes the stats. Typically, with the Ten Commandments. Now, some ministers teach and say that, oh, the law, we are talking about the civil uh, ceremonial laws, and that doesn't include the Ten, ten Commandments. They are wrong. Somebody once said, I'll go, I'll, go, I'll go out and say this. When I started teaching some of these things, I lost one of my pastors. Uh, one pastor said, how, 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 it's true, we are, we are born again. By believing in Jesus Christ, but uh, we have to go back and obey the law. I said no. The Ten Commandments. I said no. The person said, "How can we do that? Because if we don't go back to obey the Ten Commandments, how do we have any kind of moral compass, any moral kind of law?" And I said, "No, you are making a big mistake, because in the New Testament, the New Covenant, in the New System, we have a what? A higher moral kind of a conduct or law, if I should put it that way." You know, higher than what it used to be in the Old Testament. And so I use this scripture, for instance. I said, in the Old Testament, the, uh, the law says, you shall not commit adultery. But when you come into uh, the New Testament, Jesus said in Matthew 5 28, if you look at a woman lustfully, you have committed adultery. You have not been to bed in, with the woman, but if you look at the woman lustfully, in your thoughts, in your mind, you've already committed what? Adultery. So you see the moral kind of uh, law that we can live by. So it's there. People don't read well, so they don't know it. You see, and they argue blindly because what? That is what they've been told for years, and they don't investigate. They say the same thing. They repeat the same misinformation. They are, they are like the echo of the misinformation or the heresy. And it's amazing when you go to the church uh, in some uh, what they call assemblies, you are going to see what I'm talking about. It's been that way for ages. The righteousness of God, the law, and the prophets. Hallelujah. Let's read on. 22. It says, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. So this is specific. He is talking about righteousness apart from the law. And he's saying this righteousness, that comes from God. God is the source of this righteousness. Please get it. God is the source of this righteousness. I'll say that again. God is the source of his righteousness. It's based on his initiative, not yours. It's based on his own work, not your work. I want to say that again. This righteousness comes from God. It's based on his own initiative. It's not your initiative. You didn't go to tell him that God, you see where I am, I'm struggling, and I need you to do something about my struggling, you know, so I'll, I'll become, you know, acceptable or accepted in your sight. I'll become clean, clean, so righteous, just in your sight. No, it was his own word. Move. Hallelujah. His own work, not your work. And then what requirement or condition he gives, not you. The condition doesn't come from you. The requirement doesn't come from you. It comes from him. And so we have to know the condition or the requirement. If we don't, then we miss it. But it's right here. It says, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Through faith in Jesus Christ. It doesn't say through fasting. Didn't say smearing oil uh, on yourself. 
He didn't say by sowing a seed or dropping a seed on the altar of uh, some uh, what preacher or what teacher, apostle, pastor, prophet, uh, what, whatever. No, it's, that's not that's not it. He doesn't say it comes by what uh, attending all night service in your church all the time. It's good to give it, give to your church and local assembly, but that doesn't make you righteous. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Through faith in Jesus Christ. So, even though I've been talking about this thing, faith, 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 in this, the understanding, the definition of it in the simplest way, I'm tempted, I'm going to read this again for you. But when we talk about faith in Jesus Christ, it's persuasion, it's conviction. Hallelujah. Moral conviction of righteous truth or the truthfulness of God or a religious teacher, especially reliance upon Christ for salvation. So I'll say it this way. Let's, let's just go with the last uh, sentence. It's reliance upon what? Jesus Christ for what? Salvation. Amen. Assurance, belief, conviction of the truth of anything. Belief in the New Testament. Belief in the New Testament. Or in the in the New Testament, conviction or belief respecting uh, morals, relate more and man's, I'm sorry, man's relationship to God and divine things generally with uh, the included idea of trust and holy favor, favor, born out of faith and join with that. Relating to God. Hallelujah. So it's reliance upon Jesus Christ. Reliance. How do you rely on somebody? You can't rely on a person if you don't know him. And I'll give you this simple thing so at least you won't forget it. It's persuasion, it's conviction that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. It's just a simple thing knowing that you can make yourself righteous. No work can make you righteous. There's nothing that you can do under this sign by your own mind, by your own smartness to make you righteous. You can only become righteous. You can only be made righteous by God. You can't go to any country to visit any head of state and then you tell them to make you righteous. Then you can't go to any pastor and then they pour oil on you and then they say you are righteous or you are holy. It comes only from God who declares you righteous, who declares you just, because you have expressed conviction, you have expressed persuasion in the truth that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He laid down his life for you. That's it. Amen. So I'll take you from the beginning and read the whole verse. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and all who believe. Do you see that? On all who believe. So like he said, uh, uh, what do you call it? Believe. It's, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the, the verb, the, uh, what do you call it? It's the same as to have faith in. So faith is enough. But you say, to, if you have faith in Jesus, it's the same as believe in Jesus. For there is no what? Difference. There is no what? Difference. Hallelujah. There is no what? Difference. It means that whether you're female or male, whether you are short or tall, you know, to believe is just to have faith in, upon, or with respect to a person. Hallelujah. Okay, now let's go to the next verse. Where are we now? 23? Yeah. T uh, 23, okay. This one is a popular one. That is what most people know. They don't know what is before this verse and what is after this verse. So you hear in uh, Christian circles, when you begin to talk about certain things, you hear born again people, they say, well, we are all sinners, saved by grace. When a Christian, uh, you know, say such a thing, that should let you know that the, the, that Christian is not well informed. It's misinformed. He's not equipped. He has no understanding of uh, right standing before God. So for, I read, verse 23, we are still in Romans 3. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. <laughs> for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It's true. 
through Adam, we all sin. But let's continue. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus for all our sin. What is sin? To miss the mark. To go out of the way. To be without a share in. Hallelujah. Amen. Be mistaken. Wander from the path of what? Uprightness and honor. To do or go wrong. Wander from the law of God. Violate God's law. That is sin. Okay? But Jesus came to take care of sin. Amen. You see, we didn't take care of sin. There's no way we can take care of sin. The only person who takes care of sin is God himself. He's the judge. So, you know, when you sin, then he's checking you out, imputing your trespasses against you. You have sinned, you have sinned. The other day you did this, you broke this law of mine. You came against that and that. He's imputing that upon you. That is why we get judgment or we get the punishment of sin. But through Jesus Christ, this he doesn't do anymore. Look, what is beautiful is this. The unbeliever that is out there and is not a Christian, God has made provision. It's not, uh, as it were, uh, going out about with a baseball bat. Okay, I'm going to get you. I will give you this one rope. You do, you do. The next time I'm going to hit you and strike you dead. No, 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 no. He wants all of them to come to the knowledge of the truth of what Jesus has done. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Being justified, we sin, yes, but I say it's being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Is in Christ Jesus. What about this? Is in Christ Jesus. It's not in the law. Okay, so I want to break these things down well. I don't want to hurry uh, over this or how do we go over it? No. Being justified, we know justified. Being righteous, being just. But look at the next one. It says freely. Freely. Without a cost. To you. I want to emphasize that. Without a cost to you, but with serious cost to Jesus Christ. Because he had to lay down his life. So this can become free for you. He had to put in time and over time. Like we say in here, over time. He worked. He worked so well. So you are going to have this free ride. You don't have to pay for this justification or righteousness. He did the time. He served. That's why on the cross, he said, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because on the cross, he took upon himself your punishment of sin, your condemnation, your uh, guilt, your judgment, your death. Hallelujah. See, I want you to know that you can be free and you can enjoy peace from God. God, Jesus Christ is our peace. Hallelujah. According to the book of Revelations, He is our peace. You can enjoy this peace. When you understand these things, you are certain you walk in them. You, you walk in peace. Solid assurance. You don't walk in false hope. A lot of Christians walk in false hope. By his grace, through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. So let's look at the word also, redemption. It means ransom. It's a big word, but it's just what? Ransom. Hallelujah. He paid the price so you can be released from the punishment. Hallelujah. When we say a redemption, we are talking about also deliverance. So we receive deliverance from sins when we accept Jesus Christ or laying down his life. Hallelujah. Now, if we understand this, as simple as this is, People miss it. I think I was going to give first Corinthians. Let's go there quickly. Uh, no, no, no. I'll jump. I'll, I'll just throw it out there to you, but we won't go. No, in fact, it's okay. First Corinthians 1.13. I'm teaching. I don't have to rush. 
1 Corinthians 1, 30. 3 0, 3 0. First Corinthians chapter one verse thirty. But of him, let's go to the preceding verse twenty nine. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Next verse. But of him. You are in Christ Jesus, who well, became for us wisdom. He became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification, which is holiness. A lot of people don't understand that. It's holiness. You can put, uh, instead of sanctification, you can put holiness there. Hallelujah. And then what? Redemption. Now, if we read this well, if you read other translations, you may not get it. It says, But of him you are in Christ Jesus, comma, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness. And sanctification. Sanctification also means what? Holiness. You see, in the temple, they set certain things apart. Nobody uses them. They are used only in the temple. Nobody even touches them except the people that are designated, appointed to touch them. You dare not. So they are sanctified. Okay? They are declared holy for certain purposes. And in the same way, this holiness, this sanctification comes only by faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 through 21. Christ our righteousness. Christ, our righteousness. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, everybody knows this, he's a new creation and all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And we sing songs about it. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things have passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. You know, we sing some of these things, but I guess the understanding is not there. We enjoy you know, the reading, the music, the melody, and what that's it. Next verse. It says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself. How did he do that? Through Jesus Christ. Reconciliation, then we are talking about a gap. Let's say two parties that had some kind of uh, issue, and they are being resolved. They are being brought together. That is why Jesus Christ is the mediator of the new covenant. He stands between us and God. He's the go between for God and us. No person can take that place. Hallelujah. Amen. So it says to himself, through Jesus Christ, and who has given us the ministry of reconciliation. All things are of God. It's God who initiated this. Let's read on. That is, that God who in Christ, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing, what I was saying earlier on, not imputing their trespasses to them. They are believers that now so they are walking and counting sins. And they are looking for anybody that they suspect is working in sin. And they are ready to call them out. They are working in sin because they are sin conscious, misinformed. And they are calling fellow believers who are cleansed. They are not sinners, are sinners. So he's not imputing our trespasses to us if we are born again. 
and has committed to, uh, to us the word of reconciliation. Okay, let's jump. We, we are ambassadors, but let's jump to 21. For he made him, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So now something has shifted here, something has changed. Okay? That's why we say Jesus Christ our righteousness. Because he became our righteousness, that we might become the righteousness of God. He opened the door. He made us righteous by his death and our faith in his death. Hallelujah. And now it says that that we might. He knew no sin. Wow. He was made sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. It's only in him. You see, in all these verses we are reading, you've not come across what some of these um, self uh, self or what should I say appointed or some ministers that are off because now they are looking for money, they are building their own empires and what have you, uh, chasing numbers and chasing people. It's all about packaging and presentation. It's all about branding and whatever that they are doing. So they don't teach truth because, you know, in the <laughs> circle of ministers, you know, this talk goes on. Now people, people don't have time for the word. People really don't listen. I mean, if you have my age group in your 60s, you say the same thing. People, you know, really don't uh, pay attention like we used to pay attention to the word of God. People are not committed like to the things of God like we used to be, blah, 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 blah. And so they look at all the behavior. And so they try to come up with something and that can arrest attention of these ones. And in so doing, they leave out truth. You know what they're doing? They are tailoring to the appetite, the carnality that is being displayed in people. It's the word of God that can help them out. Hallelujah. Amen. So you don't stop preaching truth. You don't stop preaching the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And this one is so good. You see, he has now, because of this, our faith in him, we are now what? Righteous and holy. We are righteous and holy. And come to think of it, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the living temple of God. God doesn't live in dirty, in a dirty place. So, He living in you, indwelling you, means that you are holy. So, why do you see yourself unholy? It means that you are righteous. You are just. Why do you see yourself unjust or unrighteous? Why? Who is deceiving you? Who is telling you a lie? Who is misinforming you? Hallelujah. It comes from within. It comes from your heart. That's why Romans 10, 10 says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. For with the heart man believes unto what? Righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Righteousness uh, what's the name? Uh, justification comes from within your persuasion, your conviction, in your heart that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the only one that appeased God, pacified God. He's the one who paid the penalty for your what? Uh, uh, what do you call it? Paid the price for the penalty of your sin. It is only through that. Nothing else. Nothing else. Hallelujah. Understanding this is very, very important. That's why in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, it says, you are the, don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? So it means that when you forget who you are, that you are just, you are righteous, you are accepted in the beloved, you are acceptable before God, you are pleasing the Son of God. I'm saying these things because the way we even go before God, the way we relate with God, the way we fellowship with God, the way we ask, petition, supplicate, I mean, I'm talking about prayer. The way we approach God is even wrong. Paul said it in uh, what? Uh, Hebrews uh, 4, 16. He says, come boldly unto the throne of grace that he might obtain mercy. Some people, like, they keep saying that, oh, God is not going to hear it because in the other day you did this. And if sin has been reduced to fornication. That is not good. You don't have to walk in that if you're a believer. 
Hallelujah. But that's not what God is looking at to answer your prayer. Anyone who is genuinely born again would not indulge in sin. Hallelujah. He says, come boldly. But what do we do? We tell people that, you know, we are going to move some strongholds. We are going to break some barriers. So we are going to do this by 30 days of fasting and prayer. You see, it's shifted. Their confidence now is in their prayer and it's in their fasting. It's no longer in Jesus Christ who saved them. Your protection, your prosperity is still in Jesus. It's based on what he tells you to do, not what you think you should do. What he tells you to do, not what you think you should do. Not what has been passed down to you traditionally from uh, what? The fathers. Traditions of men, policies of denominations, and what have you. I'm not talking about policies of nations. I said denominations. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. It says that. Hallelujah. We are now become what? The temple. And I'll close because of time. Because I don't want to read. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 6, 16 says that we are the temple. I mean, this is to remind you that you are holy, you are righteous, you are just. That's why whatever you call the sin. Ephesians 4, 24. Ephesians 4, 24. Let's start from uh, 22. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What does Ephesians 4 Okay. Okay, 22. But you put off concerning your former conduct before you became born again to be a Christian. The old man who grows, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Lust. Corrupt. Now, when so we talk about corrupt, what is that? <laughs> to destroy. In the opinion of the Jews, the temple was corrupted or destroyed when anyone defiled or in the slightest degree damaged anything in it or its guardians neglected their duties. To lead away a Christian uh, church from the state of knowledge and holiness which it, which it ought to abide. See, it says to be destroyed, to perish. In uh, an ethical sense, to corrupt, deprave. Do you get it there? Yeah. Okay. So we are talking about moral influences that would defile or you know make you what? lose your what your your compass, your your, your bearing. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. So for the next verse. To deceitful lust. <laughs> uh, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's another subject, but I can't go into my time is up. 24 says, and that you put on the new man, which was according to God, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So if you are born again, this is who you are. The Bible says that God created us in his image. Sin entered, corruption. But it says, when you believe in Jesus Christ, because righteousness comes through him, our faith in him, it says, you have a new man created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Do you see that? In true righteousness and holiness. Holiness, we can talk about what? Sanctification. Piety towards God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. You see how this is? This is simple. Partnership with God. God provides, we take advantage of it. God gives, and then we take it. God declares, we accept it. God says something, we are in agreement with Him, and that's it. You have to genuinely, from your heart, believe it. Now you are created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. 
For the ladies, it has nothing to do with whether you wear a long skirt or a, a short skirt. It has nothing to do with if you're a lady, you don't wear makeup or you wear makeup. Holiness has nothing to do with that. If you're a male, it has nothing to do whether you keep your hair very short or you have bushy hair. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with when you when you are dressed, you're wearing a shirt as a guy, then you you you, you leave the first two buttons uh, unbuttoned or something. You know, that doesn't make you unholy. You know, at times if you are wearing a necklace and whatever, growing up, you know, they will look at you like, oh, you are not holy. Why are you wearing all these things and whatever? You know, that has something to do with righteousness or holy. It's a state that is whole and acceptable before God, because you've done what He requires from you. The only thing He requires, the only condition, is your faith in Jesus Christ. Your belief, your confidence that you place in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the one who made the down payment for your redemption, the one who took your place of judgment, of sin, the penalty of sin, which is there. He is the one that has made you all just and what? Righteous. Because you believe in him, God says you are innocent because your whatever you are owing is what paid for. That's it. I end on this note. I charge you the words in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 and 13. Start from the liberty of with Jesus. The anointed has made us free. Do not again be entangled with the yoke of bondage, but by love serve one another. Love you dearly and thanks for tuning in. And uh, you know what it is. Do your due diligence study.